we are facing the prospect of significant worsening of health inequalities. And that's really frightening. The immediate effects of the COVID-19 pandemic over the past four months have been devastating and they could well expose existing social and economic fault lines. When the epidemic struck, princes and paupers alike were susceptible. The Prince of Wales, the Prime Minister in the UK, then the next phase with lockdown exposed the sharp divisions in society. Those who could, who could work from home and those who couldn't those who had reserves of income or wealth, and those who couldn't afford to eat. Even if we keep the pandemic in check, we will live with the consequences for years to come. Now, one of the longer lasting effects is predicted to be a transformation in the way doctors interact with their patients, now that telehealth consultations are reimbursed by Medicare. It's a decade's worth of work uh, in a matter of days. There's no doubt that being able to consult your doctor from home can have huge benefits for people with chronic diseases. But there may be circumstances where remote consultations aren't a good thing. It's not something which is a replacement for a physical visit. And it's actually not that easy to jump straight from a world where you've been using face-to-face -face visits to one where you're using the phone or video. You don't have access to all the same cues, you don't have access to doing a physical examination, and it actually isn't the same. And there are groups of people for whom telehealth might create more problems than it solves. What we're finding is that a lot of our patients from non-English speaking backgrounds prefer to come in and see us face to face because they find it very difficult to manage the technology for video or for phones. It's actually a bit discriminatory. For many cancers, early diagnosis can save your life, or at the very least, avoid radical surgery and chemotherapy. Going forward six to 12 months, what are the chances that even this short period of lockdown could have serious consequences for people with cancer symptoms which haven't been followed up? Already, it looks as though there's been a significant drop in cancer notifications since the pandemic started. We're concerned about the causing of breast screen invitations. And we know that breast screen reduces mortality for women with breast cancer by somewhere between 30 and 40%. But we're also concerned about cervical screening. But it's the hit to the economy that could have the biggest impact on our health. Sir Michael Marmot is a world authority on how the economy and inequality affect our health. So one problem of health inequities are the differences between countries. Through the key determinants of health, early child development, education, employment and working conditions, number four, having enough money to live on, and number five, environments, including housing. Things are likely to get much worse for all of those five come a global recession consequent upon the pandemic. Australians in the lowest socioeconomic group are 37% more likely to die from the cancer than if they're in the highest socioeconomic group. And while it might seem premature to talk about this, how we get out of this economic and debt spiral will also affect our health. How do we create the conditions for people to have the capability to lead lives they have reason to value? Now that should be the priority. And if that means tolerating debt and deficit, when the interest rates are close to zero, then we tolerate it. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.